Yo, 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 yo. Brandon Johnson, Smoke Shop Masterclass and 404 Smoke Shop. Just wanted to reach out to you. Today, we are answering a couple of questions that came across my email box. And specifically, it was related to uh, the benefits of the course as far as cigars. And so I just kind of wanted to, um, to kind of like address a couple of questions. So this particular guy, um, we won't mention his name or where he's at, but basically he is interested in opening up a cigar, uh, a mostly a cigar online store. Um, and the online store would also cover hookahs and vape products uh, and things like that. It looks like he has already began to sell online cigars or cigars to friends and smoking buddies here locally in his particular city. Um, and that he was most interested, of course, out of everything smoke related in selling cigars. So it's, it's, it's always great, by the way, to, to mix your hobby with what you like to do. Um, he wants to expand it and make it a full-time business and he's in the process of creating his online platform for selling cigars. And his question is, after seeing the videos, he realizes that he may not be as prepared as he would like to be. Um, his question is, does the course cover cigars um, as well as hookah and vape products? And um, and so here we go. So basically, yes. The question, the what we do is kind of like a first-person um, review of how we've opened up our four smoke shops. So it's going to pertain directly to us. Now, as far as cigars, we have opened up a couple of different shops with walk-in humidors. So we have your connections as far as your Spanish cedar wood, as far as your hum humidifiers that you would use, and they're automatic. So basically you set and forget them, except for water in a lot of situations. Uh, but basically for humidity, um, what the temperature should be, things like that. So we have some of that. We have some ideas as far as ventilation, although we could tell you what we've done. We could kind of like point you in the right directions for that. Is that a part of the course? Um, it can be, but a lot of times what you, what you have as far as the course is the ability to to come in, learn the basics of how we did it, and then there's uh, there's a community forum within the course. So that means that you can ask questions as you go along and or you can email me as part of the course and we'll give you give you some 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 hints and tips. Now, not everything is going to come with the course, but we'll try to get as close as we can to it. Um, so the question is cigars. So if you're interested in selling cigars, um, one of the I'm going to give him some free game here. So whether he wants to join our course or not. Um, all cigars, of course, most cigars, 99% of cigars out there are going to contain nicotine. Now, that might be a great business idea is to come up with some herbal cigars. I don't know how the taste would be. Some real cigar aficionados enthusiasts would probably rip that idea apart. However, cigars carry nicotine. Nicotine carries a tobacco tax. And so, um, Hey, sir, what I would suggest that you do is, is that if you're really, really trying to take this serious, you need to A, look into your tobacco licenses for your particular state, um, state and even as low as a municipality. Now, what I've seen, because I've done some research and helped some people research from other states, a lot of times, whether they call it a tobacco tax stamp, whether they call it a stamp, um, you still have to pay your tax. Here in Georgia, um, on cigars, premium cigars, the tax is 23% per, st per stick. So if I sell one for a buck, that means 23 cents is going some kind of way to the tax man. So you either have to adjust that in pricing while still remaining competitive with other cigar vendors. Um, number two thing to consider besides chasing down your that is that um, I know here in Georgia, Georgia has recently changed the tobacco license laws to where it has to be attached to some type of brick and mortar business. That means I have to have a physical location to sell tobacco out of. So somewhere between our third and our fourth store, as I just mentioned, um, or I, as I have mentioned in other videos, 
uh, the state of Georgia changed their tobacco, tobacco tax laws. And so what happened was is that there were hookah teams, um, there were cigar bar, uh, uh, mobile cigar bars. They had trailers. You could, it was really cool. You could walk into a, a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, have a cigar, buy a cigar. The problem is, is that the state of Georgia kind of caught up with all that. Um, and those guys weren't paying their tobacco taxes. And so what happened is, is that they locked it down. So they said any Joe Blow that is selling hookah and getting nicotine shisha, uh, from the wholesalers to um, out of their house and then going and doing parties and everything else like that um, we're locking we're locking it down and same thing with the cigar folks man so so I just kind of tell you that story because when I did go get my fourth uh, tobacco store basically what happened was it was that much harder for us to to get our license the reason why is because the state of Georgia now wants you to have a cigar, a certificate of occupancy, occupancy from the city or the municipality of which you are part of. So what that means is, hey, I had to have my store built out. I had to have the city of East Point, Georgia to give me a stamp and a business license before I could even get a tobacco license. Now, before that, it was it was wide open. Basically, I could just apply and you know two or three months before we were even done with our build out we could apply at least and then basically we could um we could have our tobacco license and be ready when we when we opened up when we were ready you know so it's kind of screwed up you know this online stuff is kind of ticky the, the the mobile tobacco industry is kind of tricky but it's caught up with us so that's the bad news here in georgia so again let's go back to his questions number one you want to make sure that you have a, you've done your research with your tobacco licensing for your particular state. Um, again, it's handled a lot of times at the state level. Um, if it's an online process, you wanna make sure that you find a good point of sale system and e-commerce gateway partner. That means that some gateways don't process tobacco because they think you're gonna be selling CBD and marijuana and things like that. So. Um, um, that's the research that you're going to have to do for your particular location. Um, hope this helps. Um, good luck. Um, whether you decide to sign up for the course or not, just wanted to kind of like give you some background as it relates to cigars, hookahs, vapes, all that good stuff from an online perspective. Lastly, um, you did ask about hookahs and things like that, hookahs and, and vapes. Hookahs and vapes you can sell all all day, every day, you know, because it's not tobacco, right? As long as you have a vendor who, from an online perspective, is going to swipe that credit card or allow your customers to, to, to do that. When it comes to shisha and tobacco, though, um, or when it comes to vape juice, which has nicotine in it, you're back in the same ball court I just described with the cigars. It's a nicotine-carrying product. The state is going to have to get their dough off of that. So, um, hope that helps you. Um, again, cigars, hookahs, vapes. This guy is at the junction of wanting to make a big jump. So, I applaud you and good luck. Peace.